I'd like to welcome everybody to my Zoom class. We're painting uh, Martin's Beach. Mimi Pasternak took this paint, took this picture from, I think, from her, from her deck about a week ago and sent it to me. So, uh, such a, such a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. So that's a sample painting I did. Um, I, you know, I, I like it. I, I like the sun. One thing I've talked about before in composition with sun paintings is that I've always said, well, the sun has to be in the center because it looks weird if the sun's not in the center. But for this painting, we have to break that rule because that rock is so important that they counterbalance each other. So if you talk about the two, the four spots of uh, focal points, that's, they're in good spots. Neither one is in the center and they sort of, they act as a counterbalance. So this is what we're going for, this idea. Uh, I worked on this one this morning. This is the first step and then you put the rock over the top. What I did differently between this first one that I finished, this one, and that one, is that this one, I did not use raw sienna. One of the things I've said over and over is that if you're gonna do a sunrise or a sunset, put raw sienna down first because that heavy pigment will go into the paper and then all the other colors that go on top, you can manipulate them more easily. Well, I didn't follow that rule. And if I can, you know, then I, this morning when I painted that background, I did put the raw sienna down first. So I, I think it's better. It lifts easily, more easily. Um, anyway, so that's what I think we should do today. Here's the pictures. And this is my piece of paper. So I'm going to Okay, I'm going to lift this up so we you can see my palette, the picture and the painting. That's pretty good right there. Mm -hmm. You can see almost everything. There we go. All righty. So the, the first step is, like I said, to, to uh, put down some raw sienna. So what I recommend is that you get out just a tiny bit of fresh raw sienna because the stuff in your palette's been there for how many years? And it gets kind of dried out and kind of clunky. So here's my tube of raw sienna. I've been having a ball with painting this summer using raw sienna with the gold. And I've been using those for my first layer in my sand all summer. But for this painting, I'm going to just put out this tiny little squirt of raw sienna. Just like that, less than a pea. Just a, ma a one little half mashed pea. And I'm gonna start with that. So I have my clean water, I need my paper towel. This one I'm gonna move and put this in here. This one's a little smaller. And a few less lines, okay. This paper is six inches by six inches. Actually, it's six and an eight by six and an eight tape. The outside seven and a half by seven and a half, and then the tape part six and six and an eight. There, I wet it all. And it's going to start. I'm going to dry my tape. Take 
take that whole little bit of raw sienna and make a little petal with it and work it with both sides of my brush. And I'm going to start where the sun is going to go. In here, there's hair, there's dust. And I put it over the whole, the whole paper. And now I'm going to try and get my dust off and my hair off. Okay. Yeah, I think I got all the. Oh, there's one. <laughs> Whenever you're getting hair or dust off your paper, always use your brush. Never use your fingers. There we go. All righty. So that's the first step. And that ends up helping because it makes it easier to lift. Now I'm going to go to my bright yellow, which is this pigment here. A bumblebee or... Hands of yellow medium, those are exactly the, the same. That's exactly that same pigment. And this I'm going to put in right over the sun and all up the sky. This is going to end up being those bright white lights. And I can come right on down. I want this to be the orange color, but this will. Does that start? Now's a good time to sign my name. Because my next color will go right into that. Now, to make orange, I'm going to use Permanent Rose and Bumblebee Yellow or Hand the Yellow Medium. So my Bright Yellow and Permanent Rose. Oh, it's such a beautiful orange. I'm going to start at the top. And I'm trying not to make it solid now. Don't be scared of... of I'm going to make this pigment a little bit darker with more, uh, more pigment so it's a little brighter because it's going to fade. So we want to keep this bright. Right down there to the horizon. And then we can just kind of keep going because we want this color reflected in the water down here. Purple will go over the top of this. Now my name starts showing. Now what I'd like to do is really get, I can see um, in my photograph, I have a one of the jets on my inkjet printer is plugged and so I'm getting these lines. So those are not part of the photograph. That's a problem with my printer. But there are parts in the photograph that are these white extra kind of yellow clouds. Now I sort of just accidentally painted them. I don't know how accidental it was, but I put that yellow down. And then when I put the orange, I left a little gap. And so it sort of painted the little, the little yellow clouds for me. So another way to get those though is to go ahead and take the bright yellow and it's loaded up in here. I'm gonna try it over here and see what happens, yeah. So this is another way to do it. You can leave it like I just did, or 
The paper's getting a little bit dry right now, and there's more water in my brush. So when I paint it on there, so I'm very gently going to just. Um, yeah, I think you could probably do something. That's going to make a watermark, and it'll, I hope it'll look, kind of look like clouds. And then right above where I'm going to put the sun, there's another one of those. So I'm going to just set in this bright yellow right in here. Well, oh, it might work. Now, to get that sun in, what I'm going to do is use this brush, which is this, I call it my mother's kiss. It's a Cheat Joe's Fritch Scrub. It's a size 12. And it's a bristle brush that's just been trimmed. You can use a, a half inch. That will work. You're going to twist it. So if you just need, I don't know, any kind of brush really will work, the right, the right size. Now here's the trick. It has to, has to, has to be clean. So that water that I just dipped into is clean water. And then I have to dry it on my paper towel. So I have a super clean brush that's dry. And I'm going to hold it straight up and down and go right where I want to put my sun, which is going to be right there. <laughs> and then I just start twisting. And hopefully it's going to lift up oh, a little bit, OK? So again, I have to, I can't just go back in with my dirty brush. I have to clean it and dry it and go to the spot, push on it, and just twist it. And now I'm going to blot it. Oh, lift it up with the blot too, not just the scrub. Again, every single time, clean, dry. Because if it's dirty at all, you'll scrub it into the paper and you'll never be able to lift. Then you have to decide how big you want your sun. That kind of looks like about the size of it in the photograph. Although there's a little bit of lightness yellow around it. I wonder if I can do that. Let me try it. Just a piece of paper. I can always go back. I'm just adding yellow around that sun. Now I have an eyeball, a yellow eyeball with a, a yellow with a white spot in the center. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to get the sun out better. Ah! That didn't work. Now we're getting it. Pretty close. I think another dip. Another clean, another lift. That's, that's, oh, oh, I'm good with that. All righty. The next step I'm going to start, I can see right now that when I'm looking at my painting, it's so much paler than this photograph. So I wish I had put on a lot brighter orange. So when you're painting yours, go extra bright on the orange because I think it's fading when it dries. I'm going to keep going though. The next thing I'm going to do is just put this little bit of sand in. So there's just this corner of sand where I'm pointing with the bottom of my Fritz brush in the photograph. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger though because that corner is pretty small. I'm going to use my 10 round from the 
museum. And I'm gonna take this orange that I just made and add a little bit of burnt sienna to it. And I'm gonna start with that color. And I'm just gonna paint in a nice corner here. And it's not a straight edge, it's got little wiggies, wiggles. And I'll darken that up later and get that going. I've got um, my arches watermark is there. I'm just going to ignore it. And now I'm going to, I think I'm going to go to the, the um, bright orangish pink, which is the horizon line. So to make bright orangish pink, I'm going to start with, I'm going to go with the yellow and the permanent rose. And that's a nice bright orange. Add more pink to it. Now I'm going to see what happens if I add a little bit of French to that. I get it. Mm, don't like it. Okay, I'm going to try to make just purple. Permanent rose. Can you see that? Nope, it went off the page. Here, let me move it. Permanent rose. And that's purple. My husband's on a Lions Club call. I think they're trying to sort of organize for, uh, to help out with the people at Pescadero. So we'll just ignore him talking in the background. Okay, that's purple and that's orange. <laughs> and the color is kind of orangey purple. I'm gonna go back to that original orange. I'm gonna go with that one. All right. I'm going to put it in. One of the things I've noticed uh, when I was painting this is that the horizon line keeps creeping up and creeping up and creeping up. So if you start just slightly lower than you think it's going to be, when it gets all done creeping up, you probably have it in about the right spot. So here I go. I'm just bravely drawing with my free hand across the page. And I'm just going back and forth and kind of letting that start to kind of go dry on to dry. So I'm getting the little skips. I am going to have a very dry, clean brush. So I got it wet and then I dried it. And I'm going to try to soften the top of this line. And it's pretty orange and not really purpley and pinky. So I'm just going to try. I just put my brush into that purple that I made, and I'm going to try and add it. Let's start from over here. Ooh, I kind of like that. Yeah, there. Try some pink in it, too. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> More purple. There. All right. So, hmm. so I'm just playing with these beautiful colors and maybe until I feel like I finally got it and I'll quit. Or if I get close enough. Okay. There's the bright part of the ocean. It's also kind of yellowy right underneath the sun. So I'm going to just take a little bit of the bright yellow and just add it in there and see what it does.
Oh, kind of like it. See how I keep getting higher and higher on my horizon line because now it's got a bump there. <laughs> All right, I think I'll, I'll leave it like that for now. The next step is to start getting these um, purples in over the water. So I'm, gonna, I'm still going to use um, this number 10 brush from the museum. And I'm going to darken up that purple with my French. And a little bit of burnt sienna. That's a nice dark purple. I'm going to add a little more pink to it. It's, oh, now it's too pink. I'll add more blue. That's pretty purple. I think I'll go with that one. So, Doris, did, yes. Um, one of the things this summer that um, the rest of the class that we've been talking about all summer, mm -hmm. because it was so foggy, of painting with so much gray, that the two colors that I've used, I've used about a half a tube each of French ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And we've used those colors almost every week, and we've learned there's about a thousand different things you can make with those two colors. So it's just here we go again with more burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue. Cool. <laughs> so that's all right. So I'm going to try to put this. This is a this is a, where the surf is coming in right next to the beach. So I'm going to just start here on the corner and see how okay I like that it's good see now these brush strokes you put pink in it Mary Kay I did I put pink in it okay yep so the two colors of summer French ultramarine blue and burnt sienna plus a little bit of permanent rose Now, what I really like that's happening in the painting right now is the skipping. And you get that when it's the paper's dry and the paint in your brush is fairly dry and you're just kind of using the belly of the brush, which is the, the big round part, not the tip. So there we go. We kind of make, kind of makes a little makes those little skips and it looks like water. And it, it helps to have cold pressed paper when you're doing this. Hot press is very smooth and you won't get the little catches. So there's that little wave. Now the sand is just too burnt burnt sienna, but it just needs a little little skips and all I'm doing is highlighting. <laughs> the watermarks, but that's okay. It's part of the painting to see those watermarks. Okay. So that's that's good start. I like that. And now I'm going to put more purple into the water. So that same puddle in my brush, and I'm just adding the purple waves, and it's all scratchy. So I'm just going to start up here. Sometimes you don't really kind of know what you're going to get when you start adding it, and that's part of the fun. Making more. So my two colors of summer plus pink. It's 
I think I made that one, that petal a little bluer. Ah, hello. Woo, dramatic. Nice. My only regret is that my water's not brighter. Or pinker down there, but that's all right. So I'm not putting in the shadow of the of the rock yet. This is just all the basic waves. And I managed to get these two dark spots here because that's where I started and my brush was loaded. I'm just gonna kind of soften them out a little bit. It's kind of a wave that comes through here, so I won't worry about it too much. So I think that's a pretty good place to stop to add the rocks. Now I can um, dry this one with the glow dryer or I can just, oh, look, I stopped earlier on this one. Or I can go to this one. What would you prefer, blow dry or just go to this dry one? Either way. Either way. Okay, let's just go to this one. This one doesn't have as much of, a, of the, uh, this on it yet. I'll, I'll put a little, no, I'm gonna, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna just go to the rock. Okay, so the rock, <laughs> guess what two colors? <laughs> French cannon and your blue, yeah. Yeah, French ultramarine blue. French mm -hmm. cannon, French ultramarine blue. It just makes just it makes a beautiful black, blackish brown. All right. So now this is dry. This one that I made before. I did this this morning, and it's it's nice and dry. So the biggest the most important point is that little bitty point right at the top of the rock. You gotta get that in the right spot and then the rest of it just wherever it goes. All right, so I'm gonna use the tip of this brush and I'm gonna pick where it goes. Is it above the sun, equal to or lower? Slightly higher. Okay, I'm just gonna go for it. So touching it, and then I'm trying to do the shape. So we just just got the wedding band in the third time. So we have 60, 55, 60. And back to these who are at the quality of the third day. Fill that in. I need to, so I, I'm going to add, it's even darker there. There's a... Um, there's a little kind of a triangle right here. So that's what I just put in. And now I'm coming down lower. This has to be really dark to hide the water. And it comes out that way. There's a little rock behind it. It's yeah. Well, for, for today it's one and then there's this uh, rock here. And Red Cross goes beyond this, which I think it may be a bunch of But if it goes beyond this, there's a bunch of things. That one goes all the way out. 
This one goes all the way out the page. It's a little rough here too. I'll go ahead and put it in. That's the shape of the rocks. Yeah. One of the things yeah. that happens when you've got these dark rocks in a sunset is that the edge of the rocks glows. So we need to get a glow on, on this. And we can do it by either lifting or adding color to it. I think I'm going to take the orangey color, the orangey paint color, and just touch that top right on the edge of it. I'm just going to touch it a little bit. Can you see what it did? It's too small. <laughs> I just touched pink on that very tip. So now it kind of looks like it's glowing. All right, and now I need to darken that little spot. No, no, bring it up here. So, let's see. What we have to do is take those needles and do this. So, I think maybe this needle, I don't think it's going to be And then the last step is to get more. Uh, ripples in the water and the shadow underneath the rock. I think that's all we have left. So it's purpley blue color and I'm, get, I'm using the belly of my brush and I'm just gonna just put a little shadow under that rock. Analyzing the picture what I see is that it's not a perfect copy of the rock. It's mostly in the center and it comes down longer than the rock is, though. It's not like a mirror image of it. Uh, I think part of it is that the, the wave is coming in right there and catching the light more on one side. And also, when you have light reflecting, or in this case, it's a shadow, the light's behind it and the shadow's getting really long. You'll see this in water where one little drop of, one little spot of light will make a, like a wiggly, thing all the way down the painting. So that's what's happening here. So we want to go all the way down to to our way here and catch it. This I think all dark in here. Working that down. There's a kind of a weird line right here in my painting. I need to just soften that. I'm going to take take my just painting with water, but my brush is clean and I've dried it off in my paper towel, and I'm just going to paint with water like that. Yeah, yeah. I want it to skip in here. Some there, some here, more there. So I'm just painting with this color, and I'm just trying to make it do all the skipping. And I think there's more here. Okay. Do you think it's done or does it need more? Shall, I, shall I fiddle with it or shall I stop? Looks good. I'll stop then.
Actually, I think right here could probably just use a little bit of scratchy in the to make it look more like sand. That could use a little smudgy. Okay, right here. Should I leave? We're in pointing with the pencil. Do you see that spot? Should I mm -hmm. leave that color or should I put some purple streaks on it? I think it needs to be darkened a little bit. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. All right. Now I think I'll stop. And I will go back to all of us. Did anybody paint? Um, I did, but haven't Half got to run yet. <laughs> Look at Dora. No, I didn't. I'm, I'm only halfway there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, that's, hey, hey. yeah, I started. Just okay. To start. All right. So let's, uh, beautiful, you guys. Sir, it's oh, so good. So fast and so good. So, um, Doris, will you hold yours up again? Yeah, I, I needed to have it dry before I could continue. I don't know if you, it's hard yeah. to do this here. Yeah, it is. Oh, no. We can see it. If you just hold it up, you don't need to move the light. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. No, no, it's good. Beautiful. Your sun <laughs> is beautiful. I like the light in your water. You're, you've got a nice uh, wave coming up to your sand. Very nice. Yeah, you can't you can't really add the um, the rock until you that part's dry. But that's a beautiful start. Thank you. If if I had wanted it to be more of the pinky color um, underneath, that we would in the original um, washes that we we're doing, what, instead of just doing the raw sienna, do you add pink with it, or do you, does it need to be that rossi? Just the raw sienna, and then the next layer is where you add your pink. So if you want it pinkier, then add it. But the, the raw sienna has to be the first layer, pure and really well worked so that those tiny little particles go into the paper. And then that's what makes it, the rest of it lift and glow and all those things that watercolors do. Excellent, that was fun. Vicky, oh, it's so yellow, yellow and purple. I know. like it. <laughs> I love paintings that are yellow and purple. You think I need to add the orange? <laughs> no, don't, don't, because it's different. Yeah, leave it alone. Um, yeah, no, I think it, I like it how it is. It's it's dramatic. It's dramatic. It's different. It makes you want to look at it. It's beautiful. Yeah. If you want to do a different one, different colors, do it again. Oh, okay. But don't mess that one up. <laughs> Thanks. And we have Laura. Laura, look at you. Beautiful. And my sun doesn't seem to be very bright. No, it doesn't look very bright. You should just put um, more yellow around it yeah okay yeah i'll work on that okay and then you can bring that brighter yellow down into your ocean too okay penny beautiful nice yeah your sun is setting you have a nice highlight on your martin's rock you have to do a little more orange in the sky i think okay if you want to yep I like how you're, um, you've left those lights. Here, I'm pointing to your painting. <laughs> you can see me. <laughs> um, the, I like the lights that you have. You put your, when you, in your water below the rock, it really brings your eye into the painting right there. That part's really nice. Thank yeah. you. And a nice big sun, yeah. It looks so big when you put it up close like that, but I see it's just a little painting. <laughs> hey, look, it's, it's a 20 I actually had to raise. I had to raise my uh, horizon line because it was way down below the sun. <laughs> so, opposite of you. Who else? Uh, 
Chris always paints, but she doesn't always paint what we're painting. Oh, I'm <laughs> painting what you're painting. Oh, it's on your book. Oh, it's beautiful. Nice. Mm. I haven't yeah. got a shadow yet. Beautiful, Chris. So nice yeah. to see you again in painting. Really <laughs> happy that you're here. Thank you. Dee, did you paint? I did. I'm still working on it. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I don't know. See, um, the lights, kind of... your mountain, your rock is wet and the light's kind of catching. Now hold it up some more. Let's take a look. Well, I haven't, I just put the rock in, so I haven't done any highlights or anything, so. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nice. It's working. Very good. Thank you. Nina? I did. I tried. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. way better than a photo. Look at the <laughs> ruby colors under the rock. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Mary Kay. Getty, did you paint? I'll show it to you, but it's not very good. I have to do okay. it again. All right. So we'll be. Ah, it's so much better than you think it is. Uh, oh, good for you. Hold it up a little higher. Higher. There. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, oh that, that looks good. Oh, it's beautiful. It the rock, right? But it's striking and it's interesting to look at. You want to spend time looking at it. Oh, oh good for you. Thank you. Thank beautiful. You. Yeah. Do it. Don't mess that one up. Do a different one. All right. That's the trick. Did I see everybody? I think so. Yeah, very nice, everybody. I think I'm going to sign off. We can keep talking, but let me sign All off. Right. All right, everyone. Thank you for being with me today. It's great to see you and your paintings. Thank you for sharing them with everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.